We're doing this on a Wednesday. And in case you don't know why, it's because gigantic Tootsie Fruits hurricane. And it's only like tangentially because of that. Um, yeah. If you haven't been following along at home, um, Hurricane Helene went 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 ham on on the continental United States. Um, on the, the mountains. Swat, the mountains, yeah, the swath. The is mountains, like you think you live in the mountains, you're cool. You are not. Cool. Mountain towns have washed away. Literally, Chimney Rock, North Carolina, is effectively not on the map anymore. It's gone. It's the fucking gone. end times. The Mets um, are in the playoffs. It's the end times. Um, a YouTuber I am very fond of and uh, a lot of respect for, Lazy Game Reviews, does a lot of uh, retro computer stuff and sim stuff. Um, won't be doing anything uh, for the foreseeable future because he lives in Asheville and two trees went the hell through his house and uh, flooded his his computer collection, which is was extensive and kind of is sad he okay? Oh, he's fine. He has a place to okay. stay. He's even on. He's like two trees went through my house, and I'm being lucky, is what he's saying. Because the rest of Asheville is in tatters. Yeah. So we got very lucky here. If it had been just a little bit more to the east, easily could have been us here. We got a pretty bad thunderstorm, one little power blink, and we thought, okay, that's fine. Saturday night, my internet and the internet for everybody else who shares my ISP in Charleston went out. And the reason for that is I can only surmise, but upstate South Carolina going into North Carolina, there are a lot of fiber lines. In fact, the bundle got cut there once and it took out the entire city down here, which is hundreds of miles away. Um, what I can only figure is that during the storm itself, or the resulting cleanup or something, trying to mess with the lines, they busted something. Um, my internet did come back on Sunday, but my upstream has been buggy ever since, which means I couldn't consistently stream to a server, couldn't actually do the show. So two last two days, it's been hosed. Today, we're back. And it's it's sort of like, I, I, can't, I put it on Twitter, it's, it's like... Um, and Blue Sky, put it's like sort of like let go and let God when it comes to an ISP, because um, you you can hope they don't really communicate with you. Um, they don't tell you what's going on. They they don't you know give you an estimate when something goes wrong. They don't let you. Yeah, know. they're like it'll be fixed when we fix it. They don't even tell you there's something to be fixed. They're just like what? And you're when like, cool. When will that be? You know, when we fix it. They don't even tell you that. They don't even acknowledge something's broken. What? Nothing's broken. You're crazy. <laughs> it's fine. You're crazy. You wouldn't be able to talk to us if something was broken. Right. You're crazy. I mean, you emailed what is us, it? right? Yeah, I emailed you on my data. What? <laughs> Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, click the right button. Go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call. What the f is wrong with you? And, um, hi, you cannot be on the keyboard. You know the rules. He wants, I love he you wants too. To be. He's, he's going to be. He's, he's, he kicked me out of, I do online, I do teledoc therapy. He kicked me out of my therapy appointment. <laughs> he you don't need hung up the call. With you my need, therapist. You don't need it. You don't need it. You just need him. That's all. That's all. You just need him. You going to purr into the microphone? Let them hear you purr. So, um, we're having in America, we're having a resurgence in labor, which is awesome. And uh, a dock worker strike is currently no. going on. They're, they're trying to no. get pay raises commensurate with inflation, which they absolutely fucking deserve. Everybody fucking deserves that. Um, however, and, and, and I understand the point of a strike is to inflict discomfort to force a response. That's fine. However, this is sort of like, there's panic buying 
And then there's this Dunning-Kruger or Ouroboros of panic buying. And this actually literally affected us here today. I'll, it's just, okay, so. Oh my God, everyone's so stupid. I hate you. People are panic buying toilet paper because of the port strike. Now, the, the conspiracy theory I heard about the port strike is that the head of that union is a big Trump supporter and he's trying to tank the economy for the election. Oh, that's true. Tara, do you know where pa toilet paper comes from? Like, not France. Not France, Tara! <laughs> there is only, there are only two places in the United States that have to worry about this, that have to worry about their toilet Hawaii. paper. And Puerto Rico. Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Possibly, well, Alaska could get it from Canada. They got a road. They have many roads. Yeah. So what happened was we went to the, the grocery store today. Well, actually went to our uh, Sam's Club today because we, we go there for getting stuff like toilet paper. It's a little bit cheaper. So we, we do that like once a month. We make a trip there. And I went in. All of the toilet paper was gone. See, I was at Target today and I didn't notice that because i wasn't i wasn't looking for toilet paper so except Their dairy there was, aisle was empty but they said that's because their refrigerating units broke a few days ago and they had to throw everything away well no our dairy aisle was empty everybody went out and bought milk too um but only thing left that doesn't in the get imported yes exactly you see work? are you seeing my point tara how would you even import milk it are you seeing bad. my point so uh, the, the toilet paper aisle is completely air empty except for one little sad pallet of dude wipes. That was all that was left. That was it. That was the Amazing. whole toilet paper. Except for one little. You should have just taken that picture because that is a photo of America. They so, made a wet wipe specifically marketed to men. And so many men think it's gay to clean their own ass that that's the only thing left. America. So what, what, and, and yeah, <laughs> the other thing that is also not imported, the milk. Everywhere you are in America, in the continental United States, your milk comes from your general area. There is a dairy nearby <laughs> because it's really not feasible to import a liquid that spoils if you look at it sideways. I don't know if you guys know this milk is very fragile. Yeah, my target, all the dairy was out gone, but the cashier said that their refrigerators all broke down over the weekend, so they had to throw everything away. The very fact which also I don't, sucks, but I get milk delivery, so I don't think Americans understand what a dock worker is. Yeah, someone someone on Blue Sky was like, "Oh yeah, I know what a dock worker Pumpkin is." Pumpkin spice they're, they're, dude wipes are those real? Yeah, yeah they're real. Um. Guy on Blue Sky was like, "Oh yeah, I I know what I I know what uh, what, what 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 a dock worker is. They're the ones who show up on SVU whenever Elliot needs to to ask somebody about a missing girl. That's that's their and job, right? And you're too busy to talk to him right now. Yeah, I ain't got time for you. I got a schedule. It's so two things happened. The first part of it was very stupid people were like, "Oh no, there's a dock worker strike." I need shit wipes. But then some other people were like, oh shit, all the stupid people are going to go buy the toilet paper. So I have to go buy the toilet paper. And it was this Ouroboros of idiocy that just fed itself. It was Dunning-Kruger panic buying. And I completely missed it because I go to Costco once every six months and buy the big thing of toilet paper because I live alone. So I buy the Costco thing and it lasts me six months. Uh, Sam's Club was so empty. I missed this Walmart entirely. was empty. So, and yet I come home. I'm like, okay, well, I ordered toilet paper on Amazon. It's going to be here Friday. That's the other, that's the thing. They're like, everybody's panic buying all this toilet paper. And they'll just like, okay, well, we'll have a truck in here Friday with, with more toilet paper. I, I don't understand. It's, 
We'll sell it all to I, you. Have have fun. I personally will be panic buying Kerrygold butter. Because if I have to use American butter, <laughs> I will die. <coughs> no, it's. There is going to be in about a month, there's going to be some dude who's got, you know, a living room full of fucking toilet paper. Who is utterly baffled why a Nintendo Switch suddenly cost three thousand dollars. That that's pretty much sums up what is happening. But at least he's not going to run out of toilet paper. Also, it's going to be a great fucking Halloween. <laughs> yeah. Give out good oh. candy, people. Well, let's uh, let's go over to the UK for this one. Um, this is just tacky. I mean, there's tacky, and then there's there's a level of tacky, and I I. When you let's get it, we'll get to the, okay. All right, let's let, let, let's let's just experience this together, shall we? UK couple kicked off plane for indulging in quote sexual activity. Both Bradley twenty two and Antonio okay. twenty pleaded, pleaded 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 they pleaded they pleaded guilty this week to a charge of outraging public decency and committing a sexual act in public space. A British couple recently had their court hearing after being kicked off an easy jet flight in March for a lewd act. Not what that means. Yeah. Bradley Smith and Antonio Sullivan were caught in the act while engaging in a sexual act in public view. The couple was returning from Bristol. Uh, Bristol can I speak to it? Bristol from a holiday in uh, Tenerife, Spain, when multiple witnesses reported their inappropriate behavior. According to reporters from the British newspaper The Sun, Fellow pastor at 16C was among three witnesses to witness the their not safe for work act, along with a mother and daughter sitting in the row behind them. Witnesses stated that shortly after takeoff, Bradley asked Antonia to perform a sexual act. They draped clothing over Bradley's lap and began explicit actions on the crowded flight. They, they, we call that in America, we call that the uh, the Beetlejuice special. Um. After a few minutes, the witnesses noticed the couple had rearranged some coats over Smith's lap, followed by vigorous hand movements beneath the coat. This is next. Them could see what was happening, as could a mother and teenage daughter seated behind the couple. When the angry mother alerted Whose the coat cabin was crew, he going to ejaculate into? <laughs> when the angry mother alerted the I'll cabin tell you crew, one thing. I don't care how much I fucking love you. You're not ejaculating into my coat on an airplane. Uh, Absolutely not. When the uh, angry mother alerted the cabin crew, Antonia initially claimed she was merely rubbing her boyfriend's leg. However, the couple was eventually escorted off the plane by police for questioning. His third leg. <laughs> like, sorry, like my question, if I'm on the plane with a dude and he's like, hey, will you give me a handy? Well, you're not finishing. So what's the point? Unless they had a barf bag over it. I guess you could do that. The, oh, yeah. Just, that would chafe. That would fucking chafe. I don't fucking care. You ask for a handy <laughs> on a plane. You get what you fucking get. <laughs> Be lucky you get anything. You like it. <laughs> Maybe that's the kink. Maybe that's their kink. I don't know. Just, geez, how tacky. Just like. What the fuck are you thinking? 20 and 22. Okay, you're still young enough to be complete idiots. I will grant you that. But also, ladies, ladies. When your fellas like, hey, will you do this thing for me? I will do nothing in return for you. You dump the fella. Mm. Well, we don't know, Terry. We don't know if he had a chance to reciprocate. They didn't get a chance to shift the coats over. So you don't know. They like might have just had while, a You know, once in a while you do something nice for each other. But like, if the dude's like, just, you know, just take care of me. You're not a human person. Dump him. They, they might have just, you know, it's like you, Lauren Bobert, me, and then I'll finger blast you on the way back and we'll be, you know, we'll, we'll be. Well, I'll be great, you know. Maybe we, they just didn't get also, that far. If he asks you for a handy on an airplane, dump him. How long can 
can the flight from Spain to Bristol possibly be anyway? Probably about an hour. Yeah, it's it's not it's not a super long flight. You can hold out and go to the family restroom in the airport. <laughs> oh, we got some more airline fun from Philadelphia next up. Um, you do understand. I don't know why I'm trying to help you all with this if you're doing this. You do understand the point of concealing drugs is an attempt to get them through the security. Correct? You understand, right? That's that's the point. That is the point of smuggling. You were you were trying to be circumspect. You were Generally, trying not yeah. to to well I I don't think you did not understand the assignment. Man accused of seeking shotgun shell filled with meth into Philadelphia International Airport. How is this not Florida? Man, from Columbia that's the County. most Florida sentence you've ever said. <laughs> Man from Columbia County, Pennsylvania was arrested at the Philadelphia International Airport on Monday for allegedly concealing methamphetamine inside an altered shotgun shell. Authorities say a TSA checkpoint scanner alerted them that the man had been hiding something under his clothes. Investigators say they then removed a tampered with shotgun shell that had a white powder inside it from the man. It was later determined the Philadelphia police. The shell contained methamphetamine. Shotgun shells of any caliber of ammunition are prohibited from being carried through a security checkpoint. What? What the fuck would... So in my head, this is what happened. Okay. You're going to hate this. Mm. In my head, okay. this is Dean Winchester, and the shell was actually okay. full of salt. Okay. But he couldn't reveal himself as a hunter to the TSA, so he was like, nah, it's meth. Because that's a better story. Was this before but it was after just salt to kill ghosts. Was this before or after the show had Scooby-Doo on? Hey, the Scooby-Doo episode was actually a high point of that season. Because by then it had gotten fucking bleak. Here's my other thought on this. Was this a functioning shotgun shell? Oh. Could you, in fact, shoot someone in the ass with meth? I'm thinking of Kill Bill, where he shoots the rock salt into her chest. Yeah, only it's meth. Oh. oh. Like, if you're deer hunting with that that shell, you've just, well, I guess you've increased the challenge level. That deer's going to be going really fucking fast. <laughs> uh, little known secret to cocaine bear currently in production. <laughs> Messed up buck. Just why? Why the fuck? How did? What was the thought process here? Because I can't even puzzle anything out. Well, it's it's see, it's better if I get in trouble for the shotgun shell than for the meth. Did he right? at least put it up his ass? <laughs> no, he didn't. No, know. he didn't. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't even bother to put it up your ass. Didn't even bother to put up his ass. That would have been a trifecta there. That would have just been all of all mm. of the things together at once. I we didn't we didn't even include the anus here, so you know. I, that'll be later this year. That'll be later this year. That would have made it Florida. Uh so this next one is we we quite often have stories here where we don't understand what the fuck happened. Not because necessarily the events, because in this case, the events are kind of what, but also because the reporting. It, little Charles Dickens, actually, in this headline. Um, Ugh. Pharmacy robbery suspect did not die 
after jumping off bridge while the police. What is he, tiny fucking Tim? Okay. Multiple suspects. Who, all right, we're already, we're off we're off to the races here. Multiple suspects who used a chainsaw to rob a pharmacy were thought to have jumped off a bridge after being pursued by the police, leaving one of them dead. But a later update from officials indicate that no one jumped or died. That opening line, that was all one that, sentence, people. That was, that was a journey. That was like reading the synopsis to Megalopolis right there. That that just that the, the whole that Do you know, sentence. I kind of want to see that movie just to experience the horror for myself. Go back to the club. Uh, according to initial reporting from the Los Angeles Police Department, Harbor Division officers responded to a burglary in, pro in progress. In a statement issued later Monday morning, LAPD stated an hour before the burglary call, one of the suspects had carjacked the vehicle with a person inside. The passenger was released shortly after the car was taken, and it was this vehicle was used in the burglary. Eleven people. What? What kind of car was it? Like, was was when officers arrived at the scene of the burglary, they saw, quote, approximately 11 suspects enter the vehicle leading them to initiate a person. We're perhaps the suspects. You a car with 11 people? Were, were, were they perhaps all wearing white makeup and large shoes? <laughs> Was, could, would, that, I don't see that listed in the report here. What kind of fucking Seth Rogen, James Franco fucking movie were you making here, man? Chase Terminator. Who runs the a place with a chainsaw? <laughs> Chase terminated in the area of Long Tier of uh, Pier Tier Pier T in Long Beach, where all suspects fled from the vehicle. A total of six were in custody. It is unclear how police came to believe suspects had jumped off the bridge or that one had died. Why that information was relayed to KTLA is also not known. See the original report here. Was KTLA ran with, oh, the cops told us someone jumped off the bridge and died. And now KTLA is like, we don't know why they told us. They're, they're, they're pissy. They're pissy over this yeah. shit. You can tell. One of the things I learned in journalism school uh -huh. was multiple sourcing. So, like, if someone tells you a thing, you don't just go, well, that must be true. Let me print it. You try and verify that with someone else. Another thing I've learned is cops. Willie lie. Coney Bear. It's it's. <laughs> I served Even... his name Willie Coney Bear. Yeah. Coney Bear. That's an interesting one. And I mean, even without the jumping off the bridge, we had a veritable clown car. Full of people with a chainsaw. Where did the chainsaw go? And like you've driven to cons. You've yeah. carpooled with too many people. I have put six people in a Ford Mustang. How long did it take to stuff six people in a Ford Mustang? Well, some of us in the cam were very small, so we managed to. But I'm saying it's not a yeah, quick process. Deep. It's not a quick process, no. Getting 11 people in a car, like what the fuck were the cops doing? <laughs> While they were wrapping everybody in Crisco and fishing wire to <laughs> stuff them into this car. Well, they don't mention what kind of car it was. It could have been a fucking Hummer. Or maybe it was a pickup Even still, truck. You gotta move the seats up and shit. It takes maybe time to get 11 people into any car. Maybe it was a pickup truck. And everybody just hopped in the back. Maybe. And, 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 you know, you know, they just maybe a, these cops are just fucking incompetent and they're like, okay, oh, well, we didn't catch is, them because they all jumped off the bridge. It is LA. So. Also from LA. Um, Hey, kids, want to see a magic trick? 
I'm going to make no. your birthday part. I'm going to make your birthday party disappear. Man punched party magician was chased by parents before arrest in Pacific Palisades. Man was arrested Saturday in Pacific Palisades on suspicion of assaulting three people, including a homeowner who was left bloodied and a magician who was sucker punched in the middle of a children's birthday party. Before police could apprehend him, the suspect was chased by angry parents. Zara's string of attacks started around 3.30 p.m. Saturday. Brian Stennett, 36, assaulted an individual on the 400 block of Mesa Road. Victim identity and condition not been released. About 15 minutes later, as he was driving home, uh, Pacific Palisades home over Mike Deasy noted Stennett walking nearby. Zizi drove past, he told the Times. He heard Stennett make a loud noise. When Deasy got home, he picked up a package that had been delivered to his porch. Uh, with both hands so he could close the door behind him and put it inside. When he returned to close the door, he said Stennett was in the doorway. Stennett asked him, quote, is this your house? I don't remember what I said, Steezy said. The man then rushed him and punched him half a dozen times. The moment leading up, the attack was caught on home surveillance video. Sp suspect appears to speak incoherently before attacking. Um, this is Deasy after he beat up the party magician? No, not hadn't got there yet. Um, oh, Speaking money with Times, uh, DC said he was in a lot of pain, but pain, but had been cleared of head injury. Less than an hour later, and a quarter mile away, uh, local performer California Joe, the explorer magician, was performing a pirate theme magic set. All right, time out, time out. What? Joe, Joe, <laughs> you're crossing the streams here, buddy. That's so there's a, much. There's a lot going on. I don't know how conceptually the kids are going to follow along here. <laughs> it's like pick a lane, man. Anyway, for a four-year-old's birthday party in front of about 60 guests, about 30 children were sitting in a semicircle around a tree. Um, when parents saw a man walking behind the tree, they thought he might be part of the magician's act or at least someone invited the party. Quote, he kind of looked like a dad who maybe took mushrooms, said Alec Egan, the birthday girl's father. Um, was this he, uh, was this the kind of party where you were serving mushrooms to the parents? Like he was standing about what 15 kind of yards. What is that? Egan was standing about 15 yards from a tree holding an infant. He said he heard Stennett yell a slur at the magician, whose real name is Richard Rabufo. Rufo told the Times he saw Stennett and thought the man might be a parent trying to do something disruptive to his routine to be funny, said, quote, which happens more than you think. He said he heard Stennett yell, quote, turn the voices off. Rufo thinks he may have been referring to the sound from the microphone. He appeared to be under the influence of drugs. Then Egan said, Stennett ran from behind the tree and sucker punched the magician in the forehead about three yards away from the children. This next line is great. Describing it as, quote, red primal dad feeling, Egan said he football passed the infant to his mother-in-law and took off running uh, with towards Stennett with two of his friends. Stennett fled, three chased him in Sunset Boulevard before Egan returned to the park. The two other men continued in pursuit of North Village neighborhood. Buffo suffered bruises and swelling on his head from the attack, said he was given a clean bill of health, credited his calm reaction and controlled the situation to his study of martial arts. What? <laughs> Children returned the party after the incident, had fun until it's scheduled end. His daughter is fine. Um, said his uh, arrest on suspicion assault. He's awaiting formal charges. No court date set as of Monday evening. Um, first off, I, I want to say meth. I said meth. You never meth. congratulate yourself for football passing your child. You don't do that. I'm just such a, I'm just such a great dad that I just hyped her. <laughs> That's not a brag, sir. Um. The the appropriate dad response would be to get your infant the fuck away from there. Yes. And I guess I which I guess technically you did, but a sane person would just carry their infant away. But you had to be a fucking ape. 
Well, okay. Keep in mind, there's there's a there's a wacky guy who's on to dr- who's on to the the meth, who has has punched the the fucking confused, thematically no, muddled. Funny Joe is down. <laughs> Luckily, he, he studied karate. And then, there's, there's just a lot here. There's a lot. It's you don't. Ex- 30 kids, 30 very confused kids. Like one of these kids is going to be wanna, the most confused Batman you ever saw. I want to make a joke, but it's it's a sore topic now, which is sad. Are you picturing the birthday party from Good Omens? Just a little bit. <sighs> we have a final one. It's also the LAPD, and this is the story literally everyone sent me this week because have you ever seen that that meme from Arthur? The cart, the cartoon from PBS. Remember that? The fist. It's, it's, well, not that one, but there's also his little sister, and he's, he's he's coming up to his door, and he's got a sign on it that says "Keep Out," and she says that can't stop me because I can't read. Yes, you've seen that, and that always confuses me because then how does she know what the sign says? Well, that apparently also applies to the police. LAPD they should be goes, able to read. LAPD raid goes from bad to farce after gun allegedly sucked into MRI machine. No. Yes. <laughs> Daddy, no. Daddy, yes. An officer with the Los Angeles Police Department found out the hard way. You can't take metal near an MRI machine after their rifle flew out of their hands and became attached to the machine during a pot raid gone bad. It's inscribed. In, why was, inscribed in, why hmm? were they doing a pot raid where there would be an MRI machine? That's an excellent question, Dara. The incident details are described in a lawsuit filed by the owners of a Los Angeles medical imaging center who alleged their business was wrongly targeted by the LAPD during a raid in October 2023. Owners of NoHo Diagnostic Center are suing the LAPD, the city of Los Angeles, and multiple police officers, alleging they violated the business owner's constitutional rights and demanding an unspecified amount of damages. Officers allegedly raided the Diagnostic Center located in a Van Nuys neighborhood in Los Angeles, thinking it was a front for a legal cannabis cultivation facility, pointing to higher-than-usual energy use and the, quote, distinct odor of cannabis plants. I mean, an, an MRI takes a lot of, a lot of power, energy, a lot of power. Officers raid the facility. Also, the first October. word in an MRI, the M in MRI, fun fact, is magnetic. Officers raided the facility on October 18, 2023, detained the lone female employee while they searched the business. However, they didn't find a single cannabis plant and only saw a typical medical facility with rooms used for conducting X-rays, ultrasounds, CT scans, and MRIs. The officer then released the employee, told her to call a manager while they continued to wander around various rooms of the facility. Plaintiff said the officer's behavior was, quote, nothing short of a disorganized circus with no apparent rules, procedures, or even a hint of coordination. At one point, an officer walked into an MRI room, passed a sign warning that metal was prohibited inside with his rifle dangling in his right hand rifle. with an unsecured strap. Machine's Not even a handgun. <laughs> Yep. MRI's machine's magnetic force then allegedly sucked his rifle across the room, pinning it against the machine. MRI machines are tube-shaped scanners with incredibly strong magnetic fields to create images of the brain, bones, joints, and other internal organs. The officer then allegedly pulled a sealed emergency release button that shut the MRI machine down, deactivating it, evaporating thousands of liters of helium gas and damaging the machine in the process. The officer then grabbed his rifle and left the room, leaving behind a magazine filled with bullets on the office floor. Now, the thing about helium right now is... Hey, I think something's wrong with your MRI machine. (laughs) You might want to look at it. (laughs) (laughs) Speak the funny noises in there. The thing 
thing about about fucking helium <laughs> is is that we're running out of it. We we have Are a we? limited amount. Yes, we can't make more. Whatever helium we have on Earth, that's it. Unless we go and to we're another using planet. it for balloons. Yeah, we're using it for balloons. Yeah. We're still using it for okay. balloons. Yeah. But yeah, the MRI machine requires helium to function. And when it breaks, it's fucked. That is a super expensive fucking thing. That is like up oh, I I I, I shudder to think that's at least six figures, if not seven. Or that the, the amount of damage you just did right there. That that is just and so you were completely wrong about the whole, I don't know where they got the distinct odor of, cops say that a lot. They say, I smelled marijuana. And that could literally what? mean a skunk got scared near there. That's true. That could, that could, yeah, that happens too. That, that happens too. And the, well, they're using a lot of power. Do you know what an imaging why why did right. you do this? That's what so, they do. All the taxpayer money wasted and you smashed up a fu- like the kind of, like, oh well, okay, metal doesn't apply to my rifle because that's legal. I'm a cop, so <laughs> the laws of physics. <laughs> I am the law. <sighs> Astro Buddy says, again, it's California. Everywhere smells like pot. <laughs> I mean, you can say the same for here. Like, you can just drive around and smell pot all the time. Or, yeah, and someone else is pointing out, it could be medical marijuana. An MRI place is they're looking after cancer patients. That is also true. That, that could, in fact, be prescribed for people who... Eh? Yes, it is. Well, it's it's... Marijuana is legal in California in the way that, number one, marijuana is still legal, not legal in America, because even though we have state laws that say it's illegal, it's still illegal federally. And so even if the, yeah, we haven't really, yeah, it's a mess. It's a mess. Um, and even then you have, there are rules around it. You have to have a distributor, you have to have a prescription, blah, 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 all that stuff. And, and yeah, it's, it's, Regardless, wasn't there one? Was it Grey's Anatomy? One of those medical shows, they had someone like get like the MRI machine went haywire and they were pinned to the MRI machine by all the metal stuff that had flown towards it. I they were getting slowly crushed. Tell me which episode of Grey's Anatomy that is, and I might actually watch Grey's Anatomy for once. I've never watched a full episode, I saw the clip online at some point. So I don't know. There was, do you remember the show Amazing Stories in the 80s? I do. Spielberg did like a little anthology sci-fi show. The only episode I remember. The magnetic kids, the the magnetic guy. Literally, my ass would not stand next to a window for months. (laughs) That shit terrified me. This kid, a comet comes through his window and it turns him magnetic. And like metal just flies and sticks to him and it ruins his life. I was so fucked up by that episode of television. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, the punchline was the the other person who got hit by the comet was a girl who had braces and was a geek and and he had to endure. Right. She wasn't like she she was a not pretty girl and they got smushed together. And that was a tragedy because she wasn't pretty. Yeah. He was a huge dork too, by the way. The eighties was kind of shitty. Just, just putting that out there. So the first thing we learned this week is, um, well, obviously magnetics have no respect for police authority. Um, yeah. They, they, they're just, just, just horrible. All magnets are anarchists. Who knew? Yeah. Um, fucking learned- magnets. How do they work? We've learned that, you know, sometimes maybe your your explorer slash pirate slash magician 
will be assaulted by a man on drugs. So maybe um, don't hike the baby to your mom-in-law. I don't know. what the, yeah. that, That's kind of a, a muddled thing that happened there. And make sure your magician has studied the blade. Yeah. <laughs> We've learned that maybe... If you're, we're talking about a story where 11 people in one car with a chainsaw robbed a pharmacy and then some of them jumped off a bridge and but died really, and and they were in a closet making babies. And I saw one of the babies and it looked at me. Um, maybe check that, source your shit a little bit. Does it not literally sound like the kind of story a nine-year-old boy would write? It does. It totally does. We've learned the point of smuggling drugs is to be inconspicuous, to not be noticed, not put, don't put one contraband in a different contraband. That's like a Reese's peanut butter cup of arrests. You just made a matryoshka doll of crimes. We've learned that um, if you're going to give someone a handy on a plane, you need to establish who's getting who's whose jacket's getting splooged in. I guess. I don't know. What the hell? Like, I have flown with significant others before. I got to tell you, never once have either of us had the inclination to start fucking in any way, no. shape or form on the airplane. Because the only place to do and that like, in private like is... It's a horror show. And there's not like there's not a lot of room in no. those seats. <sighs> and and finally we learned a lesson apparently a lot of you need to learn. We do not import toilet paper from <laughs> overseas. You dipshits. It's like, just. But please, please buy the dude wipes and clean your butt. 